The following presentation was recorded at the Buddhist Society of Victoria, Malvern East, Australia. Please visit our website at bsv.net.au. Uh, the first question tonight is um, your thoughts on how to be kind without being a doormat. Mm. Yeah, it's um, a lot of people have this kind of, uh, they either have the actual explicit problem that they are very, very kind and they do open themselves up a lot and actually, in a way, actually let themselves, let other people take advantage of them. Um, and other people that aren't maybe so kind, they actually have the view that if you are very kind, that you will um, you know, be treated like a, like a doormat or whatever. So, but this, it's not necessarily so that just because you're kind and compassionate and, and caring and helping for other people that you will actually, uh, or that you need to actually let people take advantage of you. You need to not only be kind and have metta and have loving kindness for people, but you also need to have that quality of equanimity as well. In that we, we are kind and we are kind to people and we are compassionate to people, but we have this kind of sense of stableness and stability within what we're doing, that it is the right thing. And what I mean by that is if you actually start to be kind, but you're equanimous with this as well, you're not just doing it out of this kind of, this aspect of trying to please the other person. You're, you know, you're doing it because the situation calls for that to, uh, for you to be kind in that aspect. But having this aspect of, of kindness doesn't mean that you're sort of soft. Um, actually, being kind in many times can actually mean you can be very forceful as well. Actually, having true metta and true kindness, actually, it does require you at times to be very strong and to be very, um, you, you know, unbending um, and, and forceful in the ways that you deal with people, but you do it in a kind manner. So if you, if you can develop that stability of mind, of, 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 the, of the mind of loving kindness, it is, it's, there, there isn't a weakness to it. There's a, there's a huge strength to it. Um, and if you develop that, then it, it's, it's very hard for people to take advantage of you. The other side of that as well, or another, another something on top of that as well, it's like you, you, you know, you, um, the, what's what's the age old adage you know what is it hope for the best assume the worst as well it's you know obviously not everybody has absolute uh, uh beneficent motives towards you so you do have to be wise enough to know that people you know may be trying to take advantage of you and if they are you just you you're just very cautious of that um you still try to help these people whenever you can, but not to the point where you're giving so much of yourself, where you're giving away that power that kindness has and you're, and it's making you weaker. So you just have to be very cautious of those things. So hopefully that answers the question. Thank you, Ajahn. Our second question tonight um, is, what is the difference between thinking and contemplation. I think there's the sense that contemplation in the Buddha sense is, is a positive, but thinking maybe isn't. Mm, mm, mm. Well, you know, it's not that thinking's a negative. Uh, I, I under totally understand the assumption. And I, I just, just to clarify, uh, you know, I don't think thinking is a negative thing. It's like you do, you obviously, you do need to think. You need to, you know, if you didn't think, then, you know, you couldn't think. I'm going to, you know, type this type this uh, letters into the YouTube browser to come to the BSV website to come to actually do the meditation tonight. You, you, do, you do need to think. So what is, what is the difference between contemplation and thinking? Well, you know, there's, there, there's obviously there's an overlap there. 
um, uh, thinking. When we usually think of thinking, when we usually conceptualize thinking, it's like we're thinking of it as this kind of uh, language that's in the mind, some kind of language uh, labeling of things. Um, this, you know, you, you, what do you call it? Like this, this sort of, you know, monotone voice that's in your head that's sort of directing everything in your life. But um, but we think of contemplation as more this deep, profound flash of insight that is, you know, arising from your meditation. And uh, you know, it, obviously, it it can it can be that, um, but it can actually involve some kind of thinking as well. So there might be that aspect there where you're you've spent some time actually meditating, you've calmed your mind down a bit, and then the you know the thinking mind, the 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 labeling, the language mind comes online, and you can actually use that to investigate any different kinds of dharma themes. You can do that. You can investigate the impermanence of your own thoughts, or you can investigate. You can uh, you can contemplate and think. Oh, well, my body's continually changing. It's it's changing from uh, it's changed from a small child. It's it's getting older. It's changing the uh, part the 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 feelings in it are, are moving and changing at all times. So you can use your your thinking ability to overlap with your concentration. When your practice does get to a very deep level and you're getting very deep, deep levels of, of concentration and samadhi, because you've trained that faculty of thinking in the right way so well, after you become calm, that it, it'll sort of be like automatic what you need to investigate and what you need to contemplate and something will a kind of wisdom and a kind of knowing will arise and you can say that you could say or you could you could label that as oh well that's a more pure kind of contemplation that's a pure kind of uh, wisdom but we have to remember to get to that point you have to have built up all those habits beforehand of using using the thinking mind to actually investigate these aspects of dharma and you've you've built up that kind of habit pattern there uh you've built up those kind of sort of you know mental grooves in the mind where you where you know that this is the 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 the, the right thing that uh, uh makes your insight even deeper and deeper so when you do have those deeper samadhi experiences and you and you sort of the, you could say the mind just sort of turns automatically to investigating and there's no there's no there's no language there or there, there's no image there or there's no conceptualization there there is a, a deeper form of knowing but that's developed through this aspect of you know directing the mind in a particular kind of way and thinking through something so hopefully that answered the question yeah again i tend to go on a bit of a tangent this time of night so <laughs> We can hope that that was the right answer. Yeah. Um, that in it was fact was an answer was, of some sort. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a question of some sort and an answer of some sort, mm. and that was in fact the final sort of question this evening that we have online yep. at this point, Ajahn. So, uh, without anything else to ask, we may finish. Yeah, we at have that an point. have an have an early mark tonight. So. Again, all the best to everybody, um, you know, especially if you're in the in the uh, uh, Victoria, Melbourne region, uh, uh, also Sydney region. Uh, uh, pretty intense lockdowns at the moment, so this is especially if we you know, we, uh, we we have a practice like meditation. You know, you can you know try to do try to do some more meditation and and. and um, try to use the time that you have in lockdown and in isolation wisely um, uh, and hopefully it will help help out your practice in some way and if you are sort of feeling a little bit uh, isolated you're more than welcome to tune into anything that we have here um, and sort of to uh, reach out to other Dharma practitioners and Dharma friends so with that I, I wish you all the best